Hi, I'm Erskine. I live here in Washington, D.C. My dad's a congressman. My hobby is interviewing people. I can get anyone to talk. My friends and I play in a string quintet, but our dream is to be a band. Hi, uh, my name is Hoggy Livingstone. I'm 13 and three quarters going on 13 and five sixths. I look young, but uh, I talk old. I live in Georgetown with my mother and uh, her new husband and her cat, which I'm allergic to, and uh, his two kids, which I'm also allergic to. My name is Oscar Oakley. I've just entered the terrible teens. I'm an army brat. My father works for the Joint Chiefs here in Washington. He's in charge of developing an anti-tank guided missile destroyer. Was an anti-destroyer guided missile tank. So your parents are divorced? Well, isn't everyone's? I mean, uh, let's face facts, Erskine. Divorce is one of America's great institutions. Instead of two parents who fight all the time, you wind up with four who compete for your affection. Out of the mouth of babes. My name is Newton Roberts. My parents call me Newton as in Figman. My friends call me Fig, also as in Figman. I'm 13 years old. My father's an architect. When I grow up, I want to be like him. I want to be an architect, a Democrat, and make six figures. Whatever that means. The fact of the matter is, I don't have an actual name. Hoggy here, who more or less invented me, says I'm your typical parent. In any given situation, I spout the cliches that parents usually rely on to get their point across. My first name is Denver, as in the capital of Colorado. My last name is Deck, as in all hands on deck. In case you're interested, I was named Denver because that's where I was conceived. My father was campaigning there, and he took my mom along on his expense account. My name is Zelda Maple. My friends call me Zelda. My students call me Miss Maple. In theory, I am a part-time music teacher in this school, but what I really do is organize the sounds that come out of your instruments so that it offends the least number of people. My mother's had three husbands at different times, naturally. Polyandry is when they overlap. You have them all at once. It's also known as group sex. Your mother had three husbands? She's on her third one now. He's the secretary of something or other in the president's cabinet. Do you have any other hobbies besides the cello? I build and fly remote control model planes. Who are you doing this interview for, Erskine? Erskine, what's this for? Who are you doing the interview for, Erskine? What's the interview for? Hey, Erskine, do you mind telling me what this interview's for? me, the famous Erskine. And as for who I'm doing these interviews for, I'm doing it for the fun of it. After all these years, you're still flat, Denver. Would it be too much to ask you to give me a middle A? <laughs> You're getting warmer. Warmer. Stop. And one, two, three, four.
Well, I have an announcement to make. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. unless you have pubic hair. <laughs> what makes you think I don't have pubic hair? I just assumed. You just assumed wrong. I don't get a pet. I'm relieved to hear it. I've had my punctuation already. Punctuation? My period, dum-dum. I ovulate. So, are you guys into masturbation yet? <laughs> you know, you ask a lot of questions for a girl. Look, okay, if we're gonna be a quintet, not to mention a rock group, we've gotta be open with each other. Relationships should be based on honesty. Anyway, it's no federal crime not to masturbate. Well, I masturbate. Oh yeah, me too, me. Too? Well, I, uh, yes, I do too. Likewise. Likewise what? No, I... Say it. I masturbate. Masturbation makes you deaf. What? I said, masturbation makes you deaf. What did you say? <laughs> Monday morning blues. Of course, school would start on Tuesday. Yeah, and end on Thursday. Yeah, which would leave us a four-day weekend. Foggy, big wit up! Hey, how you guys doing? What's going on here? Oh, look, there's Oscar. What's everyone whispering about? Haven't you heard? Haven't we heard what? Miss Mabel got mugged last night. Oh, my God. Was she hurt? Was she ever? The mug threw some kind of acid in her face and nearly blinded her. She's going to need an operation. What a bitch. Where is she? She's at the Memorial Hospital. How you doing, Miss Maple? Who's that? It's me, Newton Robinson. Newton. 
Newton. I, I'm doing just fine, I suppose, all things considered. It must be hard, not being able to see and all. Denver. Yes, it's hard. But I just thank the good Lord they didn't do anything to my hearing. Maple. We absolutely have to do something to help her. She's a part-time teacher. She has no health insurance. The document taking in the collection for her, the operation costs $100,000. Where are they going to get their hands on that kind of bread? Bread doesn't grow on trees, you know. Money neither. Hey, Miss Maple. How can we help her? Yeah, what a bitch. Watch out, everybody. I think he's getting another one of his brainstorms.
All right, Hoggy, you and Oscar follow him from across the street. Denver and I and Newton will follow him from behind. All right, whatever you do, act natural. <laughs> Vladimir Timoshenko. I'm 37 years of age, and I'm a first secretary in the Soviet embassy here in Washington. Here's my question. What are you doing in the park? Why aren't you at the embassy doing whatever secretaries do? I suppose there is no harm in answering you that. Uh, after all, you're just a small child. Huh? I'm in charge of analyzing the American public opinion. Every once in a while, I get into my blue jeans, chew gum, listen to Beth Midler, and make believe that I'm an American. So I can understand what goes on in those capitalist heads of yours. And you, sunny boy, who are you doing this interview for, eh? Get a hold of this. It's a photo of the Sergeant York ground air missile system. Uh, 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 here's a new Israeli automatic rapid fire rifle that's replacing the Uzi submachine gun. Would you believe a photograph of the control panel of a Vinic Man intercontinental ballistic missile silo? I've got the best yet a cross section diagram of the new Abrams mainline battle tank. No. What do you have against the Abrams mainline battle tank? I don't have anything against the Abrams mainline battle tank. It's just that. If we can waltz right into a storm by a picture of it, we can bet the Russians have also waltzed right into a storm by a picture of it. Erskine's right. I never thought of that. Well, then where are we going to get our secrets from? What we need is some place with pictures of military equipment that the Russians wouldn't even think of looking for. Mohawk 
Stealth F-19 fighter. I think we got us our secret. And that completes the tail section. Where'd you learn to do that kind of stuff, Vic? Eh? I told you when you interviewed me. You want to be like my father. I uh, picked it up watching him. What is it with you and Zitz? You think it was leprosy or something? Zits are worse than leprosy. It's like having an advertisement over your head that says adolescent. Nobody takes a kid with Zitz seriously. You gotta learn to take it in your stride. <laughs> Easy for you to say. You don't even have any Zitz. Doing it again. Doing what again? You're staring at my boobs. You're almost as obsessed with them as you are with Zip. You're accusing me of staring at your boobs? It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's the kind of thing that can happen to anyone. Hey guys, what do you think? What I think is the Russians will pay plenty to get their hands on this. It's humongous, Newton. How much do you think we can ask for? We've got to be real careful. You see, if we ask for too little, they might be suspicious that the plans aren't real. But if we ask for too much, they might not be able to afford it. Hey, what in the heck did you do that for? Well, we give them half, and we tell them we'll give them the other half for 25 big ones. And we sit back and wait, and see what they give us. 25 big ones. Did anybody ever tell you you're very original? Poor boy. Big ones. That is not peanuts. Yes, but if this is genuine, the thin man will be very pleased. У нас очень мало данных о самолете Стелт. Рассмотрим эту фотографию. Реактивный самолет Стелт совершает испытательный полет в зимних условиях над штатом Невада. Обратите. Обратите внимание, он полностью совпадает с нашими чертежами. Видно, ваши заключения. Технические данные, товарищ генерал, указывают на то, что добытая нами документация не фальшивка. Пошлите им телеграмму по-английски. I want his identity. His name, his age, his religion, his connections, his house. 
habits, his weaknesses, his past, his presence. Можете запомнить мои слова, меняйте работу. Along with the payment, I have to include a personal note. Complimenting him on the high quality of his information. We must play this new spy with great skill. If they can do this, I'll come to it myself. Thin man is one of the most closely guarded secrets of the Soviet military establishment. What we do know, his name is Victor. We don't know his age. We don't know what he really looks like. All we know for sure is that he is the mastermind behind Soviet espionage activity in North America. How do we really know that he's thin? No. <laughs> At least not from that picture. Well, maybe he stopped jogging around the Kremlin. <laughs> looking for a perhaps formerly thin man named Victor something who might have jogged around the Kremlin. <sighs> what other gems do you have for me? Our uh, source in Moscow, the man who took uh, a photograph, is fairly certain that the thin man comes to America to personally debrief his key agents. Chances are, sir, he's passing himself off as a businessman or a tourist. Someone who could come over for a few days and uh, not arouse suspicion. Jet, a plane so secret we don't even publicly admit it exists. Well, the way I see it is, if this spy got his hands on the stealth, God knows what other secrets he'll give away. What a bitch. I'll get my people to compile a list of everyone who had access to the stealth plans. What good will that do? The names will run into the hundreds. I don't care if they run into the thousands. Put this onto the front burner. I want every Russian who sticks his nose out of that embassy followed day and night. Oh, and I wouldn't give her one good snapshot of the thin man's face. We've been checking out the dead letter drop for a week now. If there's nothing there, it must mean they didn't fall for it. No. Denver. Denver? Denver! What do you say, Denver? What do you say, Morgan? What about us taking a flick Saturday? Thanks, but I've seen it already. How do you know if you've seen it? If I didn't say what flick I want to go see. Whatever flick you want to go see, I've seen it already. Anyway, I'm going to the movies with Erskine here. What you doing, Denver? Robbing the cradle? You need someone with a little more experience. Don't you read the newspapers, dummy? 
The only ones really safe to fool around with are the certified virgins. Yeah, he looks like a certified virgin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, guys. Here we go. What do you have go. to go and say that for? There's nothing wrong with being a virgin. Some very wonderful people happen to be virgins. Me, for example. Did you get your zits? I hope they're not contagious. Morgan's a pathetic nerd. I already been to the movies with him twice. All he wants to do is feel me up. Feel you up as in... feel you up? He doesn't believe in foreplay. What's foreplay? When you talk before you touch. I'm not ready to be felt up. Yet. Erskine, I gotta ask you something and I want a straight answer. No bullshit, promise? Yeah, promise. How do you see our relationship? Is that what we have? I mean it, Erskine. Puberty is a difficult period for a girl. She has the right to know what to expect. And how soon she can expect it. We belong to the same rock group. And the same quintet, the same aspiring. Here's I'm not talking about our professional relationship. I'm talking about our personal relationship. Our personal relationship. Humongous. Humongous? You're doing it again, Erskine. Doing what? You're zeroing in on my boobs again. I am, Arna. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Wait a minute. I thought you weren't ready for that kind of thing. Yet. When Morgan paws me at the movies, it's one thing. When a friend puts his hand on your heart, what's well, different? I think I'll take a rain check. those dudes, will ya? What a bonehead I am. I should have thought of that. They put something in the dead letter drop, all right. But they're watching to see who's gonna pick it up. And our dudes are watching their dudes watching.
ashamed of yourself, young man. my day. Maybe it is my day after all. You mean our day, comrade. Something like, um, sober. No one ever called me comrade before. No one's ever called me sober before. Read the part where they promote us to Lieutenant Colonel and the KGB. Read the part about us getting the Order of the Red Star. I like the bit about the health insurance plan for spies. Oh, geez, I haven't even started working yet and I got health insurance. We've got to plan our next step very carefully. How would we know some kids would play decadent rock music? It's decadent, but it's beautiful. Let us hope that this new spy of ours will keep in touch with us again. Tabashenko! Hmm? He's so kind to pass me a straw. out the park. Some kids staged an impromptu rock concert. Whoever it was the Russians were waiting for never showed. The uh, spy was scared off by the rock news. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother was working on her third husband. What effect has this had on you? 
None whatsoever. If you want to know the truth, my parents fought so much it was a relief when they separated. They're perfectly happy living apart. They get along better now than they did when they were married. Just the other day, when my father came to take me to lunch, he was very friendly with my mom. And when he left, he... And when he left? When he left, he shook hands with her, if you must know. Well, what's wrong with shaking hands? Don't you see? He didn't kiss her. It means it's all over between them. another secret. is on the wing. The boss is right behind him. Don't let him out of your sight. Let's go. So close. I seem to have lost my car.
Poroshenko. We are rolling one of the greatest spies of all time. Let us get this to the cinema immediately. Я обращаю ваше внимание на тот факт, что контуры мостовой части полностью соответствуют чертежам. И длина фюзеляжа также совпадает с нашей документацией. Я обращаю ваше внимание на тот факт, что контуры мостовой части полностью соответствуют чертежам. still have to get him the $25,000 to get the other half of the plan. And we're going to be there when they make the payoff. Uh, Jake, it's Eastman. I need a helicopter with full surveillance gear. Helicopter with surveillance? Yeah, put Kopech in the laundry vehicle and Muin's in the delivery van in front of the embassy. Delivery van at the embassy? No matter what we do.
$25,000. Read the letter again, Rusty. I like the part where they promote us to full colonel in the KGB. I like the part where we get the Order of the Red Banner. Yeah, but I like the bit about the life insurance plan for spies. I haven't even started working yet, and I got health insurance and life insurance. over here and let me have a look. This time it even itches. Zips don't itch. Anyway, there's nothing there but a figment of your imagination. Mm -mm. I can feel it when I rub. It must be just under the skin, waiting to pop like a time bomb. Seriously, though, I came to a big decision last night. You know, a lot of women fake having orgasms, but not me. Finally make love with someone. I'm gonna be not having orgasms. You know, you're a real number different. Why are you gonna do that? I read in this woman's magazine where it's a real turn on for men. You're trying to make women who have trouble having orgasms come off? So I figure why spoil their fun. You spend an awful lot of time on my boobs. Are you ready to you know what? Now? Here? I think I'll take another rain check. Jesus, Erskine. I'm beginning to wonder what I see in you. Erskine is not my idea of your average sexy name. I don't want to touch my boobs. It's not that I don't want to. It's just that I can't get my spawn to do what my head tells it to do. Hey, a likely story. Have you seen this about the spring kite flying contest? It says here, the only regulation is you've got to make the kite yourself. You can't go out and buy one. You see, we enter it, huh? We could get Newton to design a humongous kite on his daddy's drawing board. We could build it just like one of my model planes. We could call it after our rock group, the sins of commission. It'd be great publicity, and we might even get a gig or two out of it. What do you say, huh? Could be fun.
and see what you can do when you put your minds to it. Fasten your seatbelts. Erskine here is coming up with another one of his brainstorms. What if? What if what? What if we was to sell Fig's plan to the Russians? Huh. Yeah. We could say it was a top secret Star Wars laser reflecting Pentagon satellite. Well, shucks, it looks as if it could be. Well, how would they know it wasn't? They swallowed the stealth in the B1. They'll assume this is real, too. It'd fool me. I'd pay 25 big ones for it. And we wouldn't even have to give them half now and half later. Give them the whole planet once. They pay up because they think there's more where this came from. Now I know what I see in you, Ersk. You're not only a certified virgin, you're a certified genius. <laughs> Нами впервые получены сверхсекретные данные о новом лазерном спутнике Пентагона. Он пока еще в стадии разработки. Это один из компонентов проекта стратегической оборонной инициативы. Sometimes they swing, and they're called out. Sometimes they don't swing, and they're called out. Sometimes they don't swing, and walk calmly to the base. Who can understand such a game? Subject seems to be watching the Little League game. To all units, execute contingency plan Charlie. the set keep off the grass I didn't see it and anyway I have a diplomatic immunity ciao twenty-five big ones yeah. here's read the letter again the lava pipe where they promote us to a general in TGB imagine us getting the order of Lenin at yeah. our age I still like to bid about the retirement plan for spies I got health insurance I got life insurance. I, I got a retirement plan. And he hasn't even started working yet. You know, we didn't sell him the plans to some model airplane this time. We sold him the plans to some dumb old kite. You're talking about the kite that's going to win the spring kite contest. Hey, don't count 
your chickens before they're hatched. Hey, I mean, the puppet's right. We don't even know if we can get off the ground. Maybe we should test fly it under field conditions. Yeah, man, let's test fly it right now. The sins of commission will fly. Here we go. I showed this plan to the Pentagon Chief of Satellite Research and Development. I showed it to the Air Force General who's in charge of the entire satellite project. I showed it to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs who's in charge of the entire U.S. military establishment. None of them had ever set eyes on it before. How can this thin man get the plans for one of our satellites that we don't have? Something very strange about all this. Maybe we misunderstood. Maybe this is the plan for a secret Russian satellite. Or, uh, maybe our agent in Moscow has been turned by the Ruskies. He's just giving us this information. Oh, gentlemen. Keep it up, please. Keep it up. Let us more slack. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. Yeah, hold it like that. Right, right, right. You can take it off. What a bitch! Huggy, I Wait. think we're in trouble. They're, they're kids. What the hell is I this? I know they're kids. Let's go. Um, excuse me. Hold it. All right. Hey, come here. Come here. You wait for it. You wait for it. What have you been eating? Would you please come here? Come here. Come here, you little hat. Hey. Make criminals sit on uncomfortable chairs. Shine lights in their eyes. This is not a movie, Erskine. This is real life. You and the other kids have been selling secrets to the Russians, right? Wrong. We never sold the Russians secrets. Not one. What did you do with the seventy-five thousand dollars you got? Mm. We sort of donated the first fifty of it. We would have donated the rest if you hadn't interrupted us. Donated it to whom? To Miss Maple, our music teacher. So she can have an eye operation. Excuse me, may I go to the bathroom? No talking. My father will kill me if he hears that we're spying for the Russians. I'm gonna lose my allowance for the rest of my life. Come on, Erskine. Tell us what happened in there. I, I told them everything. Everything? I said no talking. Did they know about the 75 people? Tell him that we've been promoted to a general in the Russian army. <laughs> Father's gonna kill me when he hears I'm a Russian general. He's only a lieutenant colonel. How can he kill you? You outrank him. I never really thought about that. Maybe we could plead insanity. These kids have fooled the 
thin man into thinking he has a master spy in the American military establishment. Hmm. You're so pleased with the information he's getting, he made the spy a general. Two, the thin man doesn't know who his master spy is, but he's dying to find out. Oh, that's true, sir. He'd give his right arm to debrief him in person. He wants to kiss him on both cheeks, pin a medal on his breast, and make goddamn sure he keeps on spying for him. We can't do that. They're children. That's precisely why we can do it. In a million years, the thin man would never suspect that we would use children. <laughs> 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 Kids can come on in now. Oh, God, I forgot. I, I have a dentist's appointment. My retainer needs tightening. Maybe it's loosening. Kids are in trouble up to your necks. You sold information to the Russians. You're not going to make a federal case out of a model plane, are you? The fact is that because of you kids, the Russians wound up with details of the stealth jet and the B-1 bomber. No matter how you slice it, it's a federal case. I really don't feel so good. Please sit down. How old are you kids? 13? 14? You should probably get out with good behavior by the time you're 40. 40? This is something menopausal. 40's not that old. Are you kidding? Everything over 25 is downhill. Maybe the judge will be lenient on us because we're kids. Maybe they'll be lenient on me because I'm a girl. Maybe he'll be lenient on me because I'm black. Now, what judge is going to go easy on a Russian in general, huh? I want my mom. I want my lawyer. On the other hand, a judge might just go easy on kids who cooperated with their government. And if they cooperated hard enough, the matter might not even get as far as a judge. Oh, no. Here we go again. If these kids that you're talking about cooperate hard enough, could they do what they want with the last 25 big ones they got from the Russians? I don't see anybody objecting to that. And if these kids you're talking about cooperate hard enough, is it possible they can get another 25 big ones for their trouble? You're pushing your luck, Erskine. We might see our way clear to giving you ten big ones. Uh, Twenty-five. Twenty, and that's my final offer. All right, twenty-five big ones for your services. That we gotta do. I want you to contact the Russians again. You're gonna tell them that you're ready to meet the thin man. I have a hunch he'll come over to debrief you himself. I get it. As soon as... If only life were that simple. The thin man is cagey. He'll meet you in Cuba or on a ship. And if my plan works, you kids will be the first Americans to get a look at his face. When you get back, I'll sit you all down with our composite artist, You'll describe the thin man, and he'll draw him. The next time he enters this country, we'll know what he looks like and grab him. Why bother? I'll just interview him for you. Interview him? Yeah, with my video camera. You have a video camera? It's in my knapsack. Interviewing people is my hobby. The thin man on video. Come on, you'll never sit still for that.
showed up. God, are you sure we have to go through with this? Well, we got to. They'll put us in jail and throw away the key. We'll be 40 by the time we get out. They're children. What are these children doing here? I don't know. Maybe they're having a picnic. They can spoil the whole operation. They can scare the contact. Go for it, Denver. Go! Go away! Go away! Go! Go away! Go away! Salushka! That's the password. They are the contact? Salushka! Children, come with us for a ride. Haven't I seen these kiddies before? We're really gonna do this, huh? Go. Mm. Uh, mm. Climb aboard, little boy. Thanks. Enjoying your split bananas? He's right, they are called split bananas. Did I say banana splits? What a jerk I am. Uh, I meant split bananas. They're absolutely humongous. Which one of you kiddies got all those plants you sold us? We all did. Oscar here's father works for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and Erskine's father is a congressman, and my stepfather is the secretary of something or other in the president's cabinet. And your father really works for joint chiefs? Uh, yeah. He's in charge of developing an anti-tank guided missile destroyer. No, wait a minute. There's an anti-destroyer guided missile tank. Um, anyhow, he brings the plans home at night in his briefcase. And so... That's how I... That's how come he was able to get them. Yeah. I see. And which one of you got the bright idea of doing business with us? That's me. I always admired Russia. So I thought, why not give these plants to them? What is it exactly you admire Russia for? Uh, its size. When you look at a world map, it looks kind of big. I see. I see. Do 
doing, man? I mean, where'd they go? They obviously did it for the money. I wouldn't trust any American who says that he prefers our system to theirs. Just a stupid bad joke, that's all. It could be a gold mine of information. I don't think so. What if... Americans will never suspect us using children. I'm gonna do it. Go for it. Never. That's brilliant. <laughs> like a child's play. Let's say you have something for us. So you mailed us a picture postcard to the address that I gave you. So let's say if you sign it, let's assume, uh, love, Jonathan. We know that you planted the package for us behind the radiator in the men's room on the ground floor of the treasury building. He... It is child's play. Hmm? Ask you a question. Sure. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? <laughs> I'm afraid it's not possible. Did you even tell me where you live? That's classified information. Are you married? That is also classified. What about children? Children? Yeah. Do you have any kids? Yes, I do. What's their names? How old are they? The is 21. My daughter's name is Yekaterina. She's what you Americans call Sweet 16. Mm. What do they do? Dimitri is studying politics at the university. Yekaterina wants to manage a boutique store. She likes fancy clothes and and she likes money. All they want is to buy Levi's blue jeans on a black market. And to get some tape, something called Rastaman Vibrations. Every time I talk to them, they have those Walkman plugs in their ears. But a teeny noise coming out. They say they listen to music. But it doesn't sound like music to me. It sounds like noise. Regular noise. And it frightens me. And there is nothing I can do about it. I'm gonna be sick. I don't mean to be nosy, but what's with the band-aid? All that. Cut myself shaving. Uh-uh. 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 All right. I got my first zit. Take a look. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. Welcome to the world of Sitzersk. <sighs> How do you feel? Like, maybe I'll survive after all. I think you'll survive, too. <laughs> 
moving through changes I'm losing myself to you I can't believe it happened all so fast When I see myself in your eyes I start to lose control again I try to take it slow I look weird. I think you're great looking for a girl. You don't have to say that. Got eyes. I mean it, Denver. You're terrific. Do you honestly think so? Anyone says you look weird. He's off the rocker. You don't think I'm sort of flat chested? Not at all. Not for your age. You didn't want to, you know, touch me because you thought there was nothing there to touch. That wasn't it at all. I swear it, Denver. I'll prove it. If your offer still holds. Go for it, Ersk. Am I ever actually touched a living girl's uh, um, breast? Breast. How was it? It was humongous. Was it really humongous? Really. Humongous. I'll tell you a dark secret, Ersk. It was the first time for me, too. What about Morgan and the movies and all that? I made that up to impress you. I'm glad my first time was your first time. Likewise. Who knows, maybe we'll share some other first someday. So, how do you feel, Denver? How do I feel? As high as a kite! <laughs> Likewise. 